Welcome to the Love Them Knives channel. Real steel is the real deal. How many times have I had to say that to you? You just won't believe me, will you? Yeah, you do, because I know you guys own a lot of these knives. Some of these knives. But I ran across this the other day and I go, where have I been living? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, this is the H9. <sighs> wow. What an incredible knife. Uh, let me get it out. And what is in here? I mean, check this out. What? I mean, no, most of my real steel knives do not come with a big nylon pouch. Like this. And that is a big nylon pouch. And inside that big old nylon pouch, and that's a stiff, pretty well-made pouch. I, yeah. I mean, it looks pretty, pretty heavy duty. Okay, put that back in the box. The Real Steel H9. Check it out. G10 scales, steel liner, black G10 backspacer. It's got a uh, lanyard placed. So the backspacer's solid and then it gets milled out in a little area where they can run that little post across there for you to have a, a lanyard hookup. Kind of keeps the profile of the knife uniform. Run the paracord through there. Pocket clip? Where's, where's the pocket clip? <laughs> there ain't much. That is small, isn't it? Two screws. All right. I mean, it's solid. And you know what? I've carried this knife. And yeah, it works that way. It, it's not a problem. It's not a problem. This knife is very different for real steel. As far as I'm concerned, it's a very different knife. Like the real steel box though. I wish they'd do a little cut through like rake knives do. R-U-I-K-E, those knives, they have a little cut through here because when you put this box down, there you go. How, what do you grab to get the top? You have to let it fall out, and hopefully it does. But otherwise, very solid structural box. Okay, and there you go. There's your uh, H9. They call it, and it's a uh, thumb disc here. It's not a flipper. It's a liner lock. It's lined up way about 50-60% lock up on here. Okay, steel liner. It is not a light knife. It is not a small knife. And yes, they've got it skeletonized big time. A little bit of clip out of here too. See that in the bottom? And it's like, holy moly, I hope so, buddy. Because it is a heavy sum gun. And it's not a small knife. And I've got this pivot fairly tight. Um, I've had this knife apart a couple of times. Maybe I should have included you in on the look. Although, I don't think YouTube would allow the uh, language that I uh, used when I had this knife apart. I took it apart because I was just curious. Is it like bearings or washers? Bearings or washers? All I had to do was watch Birdshot 4, their review of this knife. I didn't have to take this knife apart. But no, I took it apart because I didn't see the Birdshot video, which I'm going to put the link to their video on this knife because they open the box and it's just in parts. And of course, they're pulling everybody's leg like saying, oh, this is how it comes. It comes disassembled. And they put it together on a park bench out near a lake. So that's pretty cool. Uh, you ought to check it out if you want to see all the pieces, parts that come in this knife. You know, help yourself. I'll be damned if I'm going to put a damn wrench to this thing one more time. That's not happening. Not happening. Stonewash, Warncliffe blade <laughs> with a thumb disc, as I said before. Steel liners, stop pin, blade stop, whatever you want to call it. And I've got this thing fairly stiff, but with time and phosphor. Okay, the washer setup, let me just tell you. Phosphor bronze washer closest to the blade on the pivot. Outside the phosphor bronze washers on both sides is like a uh, synthetic washer. 
Don't know exactly what synthetic material it is, if it's Teflon or whatever. It's not white, it's dark color. Uh, so, don't know. But it, it works, I it, it gets smoother as you do this. And uh, so, you know, over, I, I mean, I saw Kevin Cleary, he's got a channel as well. Kevin Cleary's review on this knife and he had been carrying his for four months before he did a review. And his review was like a year ago. So where's this knife been or where have I been while this knife's been hanging around? I don't know. Because I usually like big knives and this is a big dog for real steel. I think this is the biggest real steel folding knife made. Look at that, look at the handle length. I mean, look at that blade length. Four and a quarter at least all day long there, which is, whew, uh, over 10 and a half, almost 11 uh, centimeters. And nine and five eighths inch overall. I mean, 24 and a half centimeters. Or when we look at knives, like 22 and a half, not bad. I mean, pretty good size. 23, yeah. 23 and a half, whoa. <laughs> wow, this is a uh, yeah, crazy big knife. For a folder, you know, crazy big knife. So how big is it? Well, let me tell you, sucker. There's what your Manix looks like. <laughs> That's, uh, you know, let's make it even look smaller, you know, make it the farthest guy out perspective-wise on, on the camera. I mean, it's a big knife compared to the Manix. And of course, everybody has their obligatory Manix, right? Don't they? Everybody? <laughs> Okay, how about uh, how about the fossil? Everybody's got a fossil, right? I'm not talking about your mother-in-law. Okay, so so it's a yeah. This is a three and a half inch uh, blade. This is not the large fossil, which is a four inch blade. Still, wowie, wowie, right? That's what I'm talking about. Talking. That's what I'm talking about because it's called the talking. Did I say that before? Yeah, it's uh, called the talking. The H9 talking, and you can call it tacking if you want. It's really strange. Uh, I was going to show you something. No, I don't know if I'm going to show you something. I'm going to try and show you something. So I was wondering about this knife. Blade HQ's got it for 54 bucks, so it's pretty nice. 4.375, about 4.4 inch blade. Liner lock, black G10, blah, 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 stone wash. It's got the 14C28 and Sandvik steel, which is really nice steel. I mean, it's not super steel. It's not 204P, okay? It's not, you know, CTSXHP or... M390 or anything like that, but really it's good steel. It sharpens up really well, holds a good edge, very corrosion resistant. In any case, right hand, tip up, uh, pretty heavy, 6.34 ounces, but you know, it's a huge knife, huge knife. So here you go, real steel, rugged G10, blah, blah, blah. Very pocketable. I just thought, um, and finish out here, stone wash, blah, blah, blah. China. Of course, real steel knives are made in China. It's always nice to read this because it reminds me of things I'm going to forget to tell you, which is for those of you who don't know what a talking is, this is the talking. This is why I think they named the knife the talking, right? Because this is uh, uh, the biggest member of the goat family. Also, very similar to like a combination between a musk ox and uh, something else. It's, it's, yeah, some kind of ox. But they get uh, anywhere from 660 to 770, almost 800 pounds. Golden, this is the golden talk. And Chinese, it's a Chinese uh, animal. It's being protected, reserves, blah, blah, blah. I'll put the link to this uh, in case you're interested. Uh, Jason and the Argonauts, the, uh, 
gold, story of the golden fleece and stuff, and and they're saying the fleece from this animal, uh, you know, was inspiration on that tale. Okay, and uh, Wikipedia, blah 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 blah, Himalayas, Bhutan, blah blah blah. So I just thought that was kind of interesting because, uh, yeah, I think that was the inspiration for the knife, and I could be a liar. The one thing about this knife is that that I don't like. You see the pivot? You see the pivot screw where you can adjust the centering of the blade and, and loosen the blade and whatever? No. Because the G10 scale is screwed on here, you have to unscrew these screws. And they're really not very deep screws, so just a few turns will pop all these off and you can take that scale off. And if I knew what I was doing, and that's not even an H6. But I could take that off at the very end. Maybe I will for you. There's a T6 Torx if it's worth a crap. It would work. But I'm just saying, I took this apart because I wanted to see the washer. So when you take this scale off on this side, it exposes the Torx screw, the number eight, that is in the pivot. Although you've got two body screws here that screw the liner into the, uh, into the backspacer on both sides. But on this side, there is no actual screw. It's the pivot tube that goes through. There's no place to put a Torx on that side. It's just on this side. You unscrew that, you can pop the whole pivot tube out from the other side. I just, I just... One, one viewer, I thought it was funny because one viewer was saying, you know, I cut a hole where that pivot screw is so I could go straight through and not have to take this scale off to adjust the... And, you know, point well taken, although I think it takes you about 20 seconds to take these screws off and pop that scale off, but it's still a pain in the butt. And when you're screwing these screws in here, I mean, you, you got to try and get this thing centered when you put it back together, which for some reason I was not good at doing. And so I went back in a couple of times to center it out. Um, you know, otherwise, uh, other than the fact that I can't adjust the pivot from outside and I have to take the scale off, I mean, it does make it a cleaner look. And look at the G10. There's There's grip there i mean there's texture there okay there's no texturing here they they give you a good little pass through here to disengage the liner so that's not a problem and of course it's a steel liner and it's a steel blade so you don't have to worry about inserts or anything like that pocket clip looks very small undersized but it's okay it really is and these will get loose enough to where you can flick them with your thumb but this one is still breaking in my friend still breaking in but very sharp very very sharp i was messing with it i uh, did some test cuts uh. and you know i mean i I remember somebody saying something like, you know, anybody can cut paper and that's really not the test. I get you. I'm just saying it can do this. Uh, but no, I'm not doing anything uh, fantastic that's uh, really showing off any kind of cutting skills or necessarily the, the intensity or the true sharpness of the blade just giving you an idea that it does come fairly sharp decent working edge out of the box and you just feel it and yeah you can tell just put your fingertips on there yes i don't know how i feel about this i mean i like liner lock knives um i just feel like i gotta get to things you know i mean when you've got a frame lock knife or just i mean any other liner lock knife like this i mean i can get to these to these screws here all the way around and I just feel weird when when I've got covers over them 
and I got to take these covers off. And especially if you got to go in from this side, you got to take the pocket clip off. And then, so, bitching and moaning. I'm bitching and moaning. I know. I know. Here we go. Let's weigh it up. Did we just do this? Yes, we did. 6.4 ounces, and it's a lot of knife. Yes, it is. Oh, did I give you the uh, 181 grams? It's a big boy. It's a heavy duty. You know, not too long ago, I did a review on the Megatherium, and it was the same weight. As the megatherium so megatherium had 3.6 inch blade this got four point almost 4.4 inch blade so yeah this is a big knife really big hey what do you think it is this way 0.67 almost seven tenths of an inch across which is 17.2 millimeters and you can see The contouring of the play, of the handle. So if you're not catching that in the light for some reason, it's like a pitched roof, right? So you've got your widest point at these uh, at these extremes in the middle, and you know what? It's it's good. It feels good in the hand, and this pocket clip is not even there. I mean, it doesn't even feel like you. You can't hardly feel it. It's amazing. So it's cool. The thumb disc has got a little bit of. Uh, traction on the underside very nice ambidextrous no ambidextrous pocket carry here right right hand tip up only not deep carry either but I, I don't think I want deep carry on a knife this size I don't want it any deeper in my pocket than it's already gonna be that's a bunch so in any case cool knife See what we got for blade stock. Yeah, 0.136, three and a half millimeter blade stock. Pretty good. We've got it all the way down here. Like we said, Warncliffe, stone wash blade. Yeah, you got plenty of material all the way to the end. So that's good. Cool. Do you think this thing will undo these? <laughs> I just thought I'd show you what I'm talking about. Bitching and moaning, bitching and moaning. Yeah, about trying to get to the inside of these things. And uh, I don't know. I mean, say what you will. That's fine. But there's the inner liner. And see, here's where your, where your torque says on the other side, of course, it's just a pivot tube. So there's no uh, access to your torques. You have to adjust it from this side. Your stop pin gets compressed into place uh, on both sides of the liners. Then you got these little body screws that hold it into the backspacer, like I was saying. I like it. It looks like these liners are interchangeable for the pocket clip, doesn't it? Because I guess they would be, technically. Uh, wow. Oh, well. In any case, what do you think? It's a whole different world. Yes, it is. It goes right on top, though. It's not a really big deal. And they, they go... Look at how quick uh, they screw back on. If you can uh, get your torques in there. There you go. Boom. Right back on. Not a problem. Cool. Yeah, I guess. I mean, you know, I'm complaining a little bit, but it doesn't take much to get to it to do pivot adjustments. And But then you got to take these screws off. Then, you you know, you pop that off. Then you got those body screws there. And then the pivot screw. So to pull the liner off and then get beyond that. But eh, it's not rocket science taking these knives apart. Not a big deal. But big knife though, right? I mean, uh, we did some comparisons. Whew. That Manix is a nice, light, easy carry knife. This one, a little bit heavier. Just a little bit. So we move them up. There you go. Still. Whew. Big deal. 
All right, guys, but I think it's a good knife. I mean, you know, and if you like a bigger carry knife and you you like this monster, I mean, you know, this is kind of nice from this standpoint as well. It's not, you're going to hit this first, but, you know, you get to, uh, and you got plenty of blade to get beyond the cutting board or whatever, so you don't have to worry about this. But really, even if you're up here, uh, you still are making contact with cutting chores. You know, uh, this would be a great slicer. Well, I cut up a few limes, but so I might know. No harm, no foul. <sighs> no Coronas were injured during that exercise. But yeah, it's a really cool knife. I like it. It's just uh, maybe a little too schlickster for me here. Uh, too covered up. I don't know if I... I kind of want some operating parts maybe showing a little bit more. But a great exercise for real steel. And they give you a nice box. And they give you this beautiful pouch and paperwork. So, hey, you know what? It's a consideration. 54 bucks. That's not very expensive. Thanks for joining me. Hey, you know what we do? We love them knives. Stay sharp.